Something that was once lauded as daring, funny, and innovative, and harmless is now considered damaging and tainted. What can you do indeed? Hey everyone, this is Kevin the Entrepreneur, and despite the fact that on this channel we talk about digital streaming, despite the fact that we talk about apps, despite the stuff that the fact that I love the digital future, I still have a soft place in my heart for physical media. And today's topic is one of the reasons why. It's also the reason why you might be seeing this on my other channel as well. I'm also known as Kevin T. Rodriguez on that channel. For those of you who are not aware, I am on multiple channels, links below. But let's look at a DVD set almost completely at random. The Simpsons season three, look at that. This is a nice little set. It has this nice little cover, pull it out. You can unload this thing. There's a letter from Matt Groening. There's the discs, there's a booklet. It's just, this is just really, really cool. You cannot get an experience like this from digital. But you wanna know what else this has that you can't get digitally? This is the only place you will soon be allowed to see a classic Simpsons episode, which is actually being pulled from rotation, from streaming, and apparently even reissues of this set will no longer have the episode. And Here's the article from The Hollywood Reporter. Simpsons episode guest starring Michael Jackson pulled from circulation. You can probably figure out where this, where we're going with this. Um, let's see here. Executive producer James L. Brooks, creator Matt Groening, and showrunner Al Jean collectively made the decision to pull the episode from recirculation after they watched the HBO documentary Leaving Neverland. The Simpsons' top creatives have decided to remove an episode featuring the voice of Michael Jackson from streaming platforms, network re networks rerunning the show, and forthcoming physical copies such as box sets The Hollywood Reporter has confirmed. Executive producer James L. Brooks, creator Matt Groening, and showrunner Al Jean collectively made the decision to pull the episode Stark Raving Dad from recirculation after they watched the HBO documentary Leaving Neverland, which alleges child sexual abuse on the part of the bad singer. The Wall Street Journal was the first to report the news. 20th Century Fox declined to comment. Quote, it feels clearly the only choice to make, Brooks told the Wall Street Journal. The guys I work with where we spend our lives arguing over jokes were of one mind on this. The episode, which is a classic, I want to stress, um, the premiere of the animated series third season aired in 1999. This is well over 20 years ago. Featured Jackson playing Leon Kampowski, a man who believes he is Michael Jackson. As a little bit of maybe foreshadowing, uh, Mr. Kampowski was also a fat, white, bald-headed man who thought he was Michael Jackson. There's a, <laughs> there's a lot to unpack in that joke right there. Um, Homer Simpson meets Kampowski in a mental institution where he is briefly committed. Because he does not know Michael Jackson, he believes Kampowski is the real deal, and when he returns home with his new friend, all of Springfield shows up to see the pop star. Jackson, a fan of the show, offered to guest star and was originally credited under the pseudonym John J. Smith. While Jackson spoke his character's lines, a voice double sang for him, and I hear that was because he wanted to play a joke on his brothers. As of Thursday night, the episode still remained available to view on the FXX streaming platform. Brooks noted to the journal that, this was a treasured episode. There are a lot of great memories we have wrapped up in that one, and this certainly doesn't allow them to remain. Well, we're going to talk about it in a moment. Leaving Neverland features the testimony of Wade Robson and James Safechunk, two men who met Jackson and spent time with him as boys. The men and their families allege that Jackson groomed a boy for sexual abuse, showed them pornography, and repeatedly told them not to tell others about their encounters. Since Leaving Neverland debuted on HBO on Sunday and Monday nights to a sizable documentary audience for the channel, Canadian radio stations have removed Jackson songs from their playlist, and a Jackson statue was removed from Britain Nash Britain's National Football Museum. So, of course, it started. This is the cancel culture we live in. We find out th things about people that we used to like. In some cases, disturbing things. Perry, why are you crying? Sorry, my chinchilla is acting up. And we remove it, we censor it, we try to um, get rid of it. 
Now, let's see. This article does not have another quote. Um, I know there was a quote at one point where, um, in fact, let's go to the, wa the Wall Street Journal and we'll see if this, okay, I think that'll, I think that'll, no, it won't because I got to subscribe to read the whole story. So, uh, sorry about that. I know that there was one version of this article where I think James L. Brooks said, look, I'm not all for book burning or stuff like that, but hey, this is our book. We're allowed to remove a chapter. With all due respect, James, no, you're not. It's not your book anymore. Once it's out in the public, it's the public's. Now, some people might say, oh, well, does that mean you can create your own work on it and your own sequels? No, that's not what I'm talking about. But the thing is, here, what's a good example I could use? Harry Potter. J.K. Rowling wrote seven books. Six classics, in my opinion, because I actually didn't like The Prisoner of Azkaban very much. I know. Shock. But she has been retconning the series like crazy. Like, after the books were finished, she made the claim at a Q&A that Dumbledore was gay. Even though there was nothing in the books to suggest he was gay. And you know what? Even if you watch the new Crimes of Grindelwald movie, it's still a little ambiguous whether or not he's gay. But because she said at one point, you know, she just, that's how it's got to be, apparently. Also, in the books, it's not very clear what happens to most of the students after they leave Hogwarts. And there are characters there, Neville and Luna. And a lot of fans like to assume that Neville and Luna, you know, had little puppy eyes for each other when they were in high school and got married as an adult. And J.K. Rowling actually said, no, that did not happen. Um, Neville married this girl named Hannah, I think, and Luna did this. And she's like, and this is how it is because I say it is. And the fans are going like, no, we like Le Neville and Luna together. Now, I'm saying this because no matter how much the creators insist that they control the work out once it's been released and they have the final say, the fans have a very interesting way of deciding what is and isn't canon. Removing Stark Raving Dad from the streaming sites is not going to make fans forget about this episode. Removing it from iTunes will not make them forget about this episode. Not putting it on reprints on the DVDs will not make people forget about the episode. In fact, if anything, you have just made this a collector's item. I'm probably going to go to the stores and buy every single copy of this as I can because on eBay, that's going to be worth something. Or people will just pirate the episode. The thing is, yeah, it seemed, Michael Jackson was probably a terrible person. I had not seen the Leaving Neverland documentary, but for those of you who have been watching me fairly recently and know about my very strong and disturbing L reaction to the Surviving R. Kelly documentary, you'll know that I did not burn the CDs of his that I bought. I did not stop listening to I Believe I Can Fly. I certainly didn't get rid of my Lady Gaga CD with the duet on it. I will not buy any more of his music brand new. I, there was one album of his I still wanted. I went to a used store, picked up for two bucks before it was too late. But I'm not financially supporting him anymore. And it's hard to go back to that stuff. But the thing is, I still like some of those songs. It's a fact. And it is a real shame what he did. Michael Jackson's allegations are not exactly new. Um, he has been sued for this twice now and was deemed innocent both times. And I'm not going to stop listening to Thriller. I'm not going to stop listening to Smooth Criminal. Some of those songs will probably be played at my wedding, to be perfectly frank. And this episode was made over 20 years ago. We really didn't know back then. And yeah... Here's the thing, it's a little uncomfortable to watch now, knowing what we know. But you know what's also uncomfortable? An episode where the Simpsons go to New York City, and Homer, there's like a, his car's got a boot on it, and he's stuck at the feet of the World Trade Center, and there's like two jokes in there that might be considered very, very uncomfortable, even though objectively speaking, they're really funny. Uh, there's one joke where he needs to go to the bathroom, and he goes all the way to the top of one tower, and it's the single bathroom in the one tower, and it's out of order. So he has to go all the way to the other tower just to go to the bathroom. Okay, that's number one. It's funny. 
a little uncomfortable to watch now, but it's funny. Another joke which probably is a little less funny in hindsight, but, you know, where there's people in the trade centers and they're arguing to each other and one's giving advice and the other one's like, don't listen to him, they put all the jerks in Tower 1. Objectively funny if we didn't know what was going to happen, that there would be planes driven into these towers and they'd be gone and there's a suggestion that those people might die. Simpsons didn't know 9-11 was going to happen a decade before it happened. They didn't know about these allegations 20-something years before we found out about this stuff. It's unfortunate, and yet, yeah, for some people, it does change the perception of some of these songs. I mean, as much as I just told you I just bought an R. Kelly album from a used store that I wanted to have before it was too late, haven't listened to it, it's going to be a long time before I can. I just want to have the option one day, and maybe that day will never come. But I am not for censorship. I'm not for cancel culture. You know, right now, it's a very sensitive time, and we're not really feeling like listening to Michael Jackson's music. But one day we will. One day we might be able to even watch this episode again and find it funny. And sometimes you just can't. To use The Simpsons again, there is a joke that is just simply no longer funny to me anymore because of because of what happened to my sister-in-law, where Homer is parasailing, and he's going, Go faster, Marge! I want to touch the world! I, I love it! This is the greatest feeling in the world! And the engine catches on fire, burns the rope, and Homer's parasail flies into the air, and Bart goes, Well, there goes my turn. I can't laugh at that anymore. It, it just hits too close to home. But I'm not going to sit here and tell other people they can't laugh at it. And, you know, it, again, some people... And here's the thing. Michael Jackson's gone. He's not going to be collecting royalties from this episode anymore. At least, I'm pretty sure he won't. Um, it's just... I'm not for censorship. And... The closer we get, the more digital we become, and the more these things happen, the more it's like digital seems less of a convenient way to watch your favorite shows than it is a way for basically people to control what we watch, what we consume, and determine what's okay to watch these days and what's not. And I don't like it. I don't like it at all. But it's a complicated subject, and I'm probably going to leave it there. So, what says you folks? Do you agree, disagree? Will you ever be able to watch this episode again? Or has the ship sailed and do you support them pulling it? I would love to know. So, comment below. Like, favorite, share, subscribe. If you enjoy my videos, consider becoming a Patreon member. It's totally optional, of course. But even as little as $1 a month, it goes a long way to helping the channel run smoothly and you get access to my Patreon's exclusive blog. And as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one.